Welcome to Betty's Real Estate Corner, brought to you by Caldwell Banker, Sakamoto Properties, specifically Roy and Betty Sakamoto. We just this instant walked into the studio. It's been crazy. We've been stuck in traffic. And welcome to Maui. Welcome it's a crazy, Maui. crazy <laughs> moment when we get stuck in traffic on Maui. But here we are, and it's kind of fun to be here. We had Cindy Paulo sitting here ready, and uh, she was all set to at least get this program started for us. But she's raced and escaped. Yeah. And Chris Meyer from Meyer Computer is, uh, is here taping us. And so, solving all of our you, computer issues and yep. keeping our website up. And I can't even tell you everything that he does because I'm just not that smart. But he is amazing, has a great business, Meyer Computer. You can find them, MeyerComputer.com. Perfect. And uh, so if, there's, if you have some needs that you think that uh, they might be able to service, I'm sure there's a website out there, too, that will give you a little more information. But he was on time, so here we are. Today, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. We have Nor Dr. Norm Eston checking in today, and he's going to catch us up a little bit on what's going on now with the new virus in town. Yeah, the, the mo monkey pox. Monkey pod. I mean, I can barely say monkey pod and think about it. Monkey it's pox. Monkey pox, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> See, I can't say it. Yeah. it uh, it, but I, it's obviously, it's horrible. It's one more thing, and I think we're going to all have to pay attention to it. And if nothing else, let's all keep being con conscious of our health and conscious of where we're going and keeping masking when we can. Uh, we probably don't have to be 24-7 at this point. But anyway, normal is going to let us know what's happening, so he should call in. Yeah, monkeypox is a, is a big issue right now. Uh, the World Health Organization has declared a, a health emergency on that, and uh, and the U.S. also uh, has just declared that a health emergency for the United States. Right, right, and so I think we've all got to again just start watching ourselves because it does seem like it's a horrible issue. Right, and from what I understand, there's a limited supply of vaccine, so uh, Norm can update us on that too. Perfect. And then we're going to maybe do a few real estate things, chat a little about. Yeah, and, um, you know, uh, as usual, we have to talk about uh, uh, some Maui nonprofits that uh, serve our community. Uh, Halimakua, again, if you go to halimakua.org, H-A-L-E-M-A-K-U-A.org, halimakua.org. Great organization for the frail and elderly of Maui. And, um, you know, go to halimakua.org. You know, when we say for Maui, frail and elderly, when we first got attached to Maui, uh, to Halimakua, when Roy's mom was sick, it was a really interesting thing to me because it really isn't always just about the older frail and elderly. It could be anyone. And early on, a young man, his last name was Luna, uh, I'll think of his first name in a minute, and it troubles me that I don't. But he was a quadriplegic young man who had been injured on the Big Island in a Jeep accident. He worked over there, and he ended up in Halimakua until he passed away. And he couldn't really speak, but somehow he knew. You, could, you got to where you could understand what he was trying to say, and he meant a lot to us because maybe because he was young he was just a young man that was stuck there but he also in his own way made everybody happy because anything you did for him you could tell he he was saying thank you aloha mahalo right and compassionate care uh halimakua and compassionate care go hand in hand if uh if you have anyone who is uh frail elderly or in need of rehab, uh, call on Holly Makua. It's, uh, it's a fantastic organization. We've been involved for, I don't know, 40 years or so. Yes. And uh, what a great organization, as well as the Maui Food Bank. You know, we keep talking about uh, the, the hungry on Maui. 
And we as citizens of Maui have to help our citizens, our fellow citizens. And uh, the Maui Food Bank is, is fantastic. What a great organization. And for uh, $25, 25 con contribution of $25, they feed 100 people. Imagine that. For every $25, they feed 100 people. And uh, MauiFoodBank.org, they'll give you ideas on how to contribute, either time or money uh, or groceries. All yes. of the above are, are much needed. And they do. Th I think it's fairly easy to get things dropped off and to see to it that what you want to contribute is there. You know, Roy, I saw that you had made a note here of the philosophy of Halimakua, which is, as a leader in customized care, we inspire well-being and independence, distinguished by the quality of our team, while striving to improve the lives of those in our care through compassionate, personalized health services in our homes and yours. I think that's really beautiful. That's what Halimakua is all about, absolutely. Uh, it was a, it's a philosophy that's uh, carried on from, boy, the late 40s. And, the uh, early 40s, really, World yeah, War II, World War right II, after yeah. World War II, when, when the hospitals were closed and they had nowhere to be. And I think we've talked about this because I find it really amazing because it was the Buddhist church that originally stepped in and provided the basements from their church as a place to take care of the frail and elderly. And that, of course, meant that members of the church had to be stepping in also. And um, right. later— The Wailuka Hongwanji. Was that the first? Right. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, it's all an amazing yeah. story, and from that came Halimakua. And any time that I've been there, the care for everyone is unbelievable. When Roy's mom was there, she was taken care of perfectly, or as perfect as she could ever do under all these circumstances. As a family, it's always, always hard. But your dad, he, they took care of dad just because— she was very young for what had happened, mm -hmm. and uh, it was an early onset Alzheimer's, as I recall. Right. And uh, but they really took such good care of her, and made her final days, I think, very, very caring. That's Holly Makua. That's Holly Makua. So Hollymakua dot org and MauiFoodBank dot org, uh, two fantastic uh, organizations for Maui. So now, are we going to do any real estate today? Well, you know, one more thing I want to talk about. You know, now we're on the elections. And, oh, uh, yes. Elections are coming up. And here on Maui, as in many areas of the country, uh, we are facing a critical shortage of affordable housing. And um, Betty and I were just on a Zoom meeting this morning with a national real estate publication and uh, that was one of the issues we discussed, affordable housing. And it's not only on Maui. Um, there's other areas on the mainland, uh, mostly concentrated around high-end resort areas like uh, Park City, Aspen, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where affordable housing is a, is a horrible issue. And we are facing that right here on Maui right now. And, um, uh, you know, Listen to uh, your politicians, uh, people running for uh, county council, people running for state offices, and listen to who is a big proponent of affordable housing. Uh, a lot of people put lip service to that. We need affordable housing. Everybody shakes their head yes, but very few people actually do something. And uh, I know our county council, um, I know Alice Lee, our, our county uh, chairperson, our council chairperson, is, uh, is a big proponent for affordable housing. But uh, listen to who, you know, who else is running, and affordable hot, uh, housing is a hot issue. It is an interesting time. I mean, well, all we do, I mean, we all talk about how, or many people, that it's because of the very expensive homes and it's because of tourism et cetera. It's because of our visitors, you know, that this is all happening. But it's not just about that, I don't think. It's about way more, you know, because we need affordable housing, but we need it in a number of areas. 
and the f- one of the first has to be some sort of housing that will help with the homeless situation that's going on all around the island, on beaches, on the road. I mean, you drive by, it's very difficult. And there has to be a way for a, an area like this, where we're obviously getting people who come here that have no possibility of having a home. You know, so there has to be some sort of housing that's a first, the, that comes before, there, there has to be different stages of it, don't you think, Roy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you made something, like right now, if there could be a way to set up some of these people that are homeless on the beach, maybe some of them are happier there. But let's just say, I don't think that's very many. And then it goes from there. We've got people with jobs, but there's no way they can rent an apartment. But there has to be a way that we find that we can do maybe something like they've done in Japan and I think other large cities, not the, you know, Tokyo, et cetera, I think, where they've done these small, small places that are like the tiny homes, but a tiny apartment. There's got to be a way that we can make some of that happen as a community. Well, you know, the island nation of Singapore that we've been fortunate enough to to visit a few times, um, they do a great job as far as supporting their local citizens, regardless of their income levels. They have, uh, you know, oftentimes here in, in the United States, we do these affordable housing projects, and uh, in five years, they look like slum housing. Uh, Singapore is a shining example where, I mean, these are great apartment buildings. The, the grounds are well-maintained. The apartments are well maintained. It's uh, it's fantastic, and it's not a magic stick that Singapore has. It's uh, it's caring, you know, where you have the government caring and uh, for their citizens. No question, Roy. That's a great statement because y- you can see that even in the lower income apartment buildings, or if there are any little lower income condominiums, everything that you see. You, there, there's nobody taking care of it. I mean, you need to have someone that's managing it, someone that's actually there and helping someone when they need help, whatever that is, seeing to it that the lobbies are cleaned and the elevators work and the stairways are clean. It's not going to be magic, but there has to be a way it happens, and that probably is going to require help from help from Maui, help from... The well, county. Well, the county, the, the state. state. Sure, absolutely. There just has to be ways, and we need to, any of us who are fortunate enough to have a home, and we have to help with these things, whether it's some sort of a housing assistance or contributions or or support of what Roy was saying before, the politicians who are moving in that direction and will pay attention to it. Right, and, you know, I've been a proponent for for years where uh, affordable housing developments for single family homes. Uh, what's wrong with having you know sub sub sized uh, lots, say thirty five hundred to five thousand square feet, uh, where it's affordable for a developer to come in, subdivide into say thirty five hundred thousand or thirty five hundred square feet, and put up a fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred square foot house, and uh, uh, you know, sell it at an affordable price. There's various income brackets for qualifications for affordable housing. And uh, I think uh, Maui County has to be on the forefront of, of doing something like that. We don't need affordable homes on 10,000 square feet where a developer will have to pay just to get all the off-site and on-site improvements a horrendous price. And uh, now all of a sudden he's got to sell these homes at 800,000 or whatever to to even break even. Uh, That's not fair to a developer and that's not affordable housing. No, I agree with you though. There is a way to make a small three bedroom home, hopefully two bathrooms, and have laundry, even if it's in a small garage, a one car garage with maybe one car outside. And there's gotta be a way to make this happen, but it also needs to have some sort of follow up so that it's cared for. It may, not, it may be that no matter what we're doing, there's a segment of the population that it's always going to be difficult because they don't have time. You know, they're working two jobs, husband and wife. They have several children. They don't really have a lot of child care. They're racing all the time. 
So we need to also support our government and seeing to it that these places continue to be cared for. You know, a great prototype of this development uh, is Napili Hau in, in Napili. Yes. It was uh, initially developed by Maui Land and Pineapple uh, as affordable housing for their employees. And these are 3,500 to 4,000 square foot lots. And the homes themselves are fairly... Uh, Probably 1,000 yeah, maximum. 1,200, 1,400 square feet. But, uh, you know, that's, that's affordable housing. It's, uh, it's, it's great. There's no closed garage, but there is a covered area. And it's a neighborhood that when you drive in there, I think it's a pleasure. You drive into Napili Hau, there's children playing everywhere. They're running, they're playing, they're, they're backing off the street so you can drive through. They kind of give you a shaka. They're, the kids are darling. There's dogs and cats. And, and parks. And, and parks. Yeah. There's parks that are there. And, uh, and then there's ravines that surround it. And I'm sure there's still enough ravines around Maui that we can figure out housing in that direction also. The kids play there, the dogs go there. It's another spectacular thing. Napili Hall, it's really great. Right. So, so our real estate show has turned into an editorial. <laughs> well, that's okay too. <laughs> yeah. I think we've got Dr. Norm calling hopefully shortly. We were on the phone with him and it looks like he may be checking in right now and he's going to get us updated He's, he's done so much for our com community uh, because of the virus. Hey, Dr. Norm, we're, I was just telling our, our, the, whoever's listening today you know, a little bit about you and how much you've done for the community since the start of the pandemic. You know, he's, kept, he's seen to it that people got vaccinated, where they could go, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now he's going to step up again and try to tell us about monkeypox. Are you there, Dr. Norm? I'm here. Good morning, Betty and Roy, or good afternoon. Nice to hear your voice and all that. The, uh, we've got a couple of uh, updates. Uh, I'll talk a, uh, for a minute or two about where we are with COVID and a little bit about monkeypox and what the future holds. Uh, COVID uh, is uh, not over. Um, we may be over it. It is not over us. But the serious part is over. Uh, most of us in this country and this state and this island have immunity uh, from having had vaccinations and then having been exposed. I'd say 95% of us. And um, that is great, great news. We still have to be careful around uh, strangers in crowded places, uh, especially indoors without ventilation because it's spread through the air. So, again, a rule of thumb, uh, try to have ventilation. And uh, if, you, if there are a lot of people around or you're traveling, you might want to wear a mask. Um, as uh, people do in uh, Asia all the time. So um, I think it's going to do what we expected, which is mutate every two weeks, and there'll be a different version. And uh, that means we'll probably have to get a vaccine periodically, hopefully just once a year. And uh, that will keep us from getting any of the new serious variants, just like the flu. Um, but uh, so we can't put it out of our minds. We just have to stay attentive. Uh, but it is spread through the air. And as long as we have people coming in from all over the world and we travel, we're going to keep getting exposed to it. So another two years till we forget about it. All right. There's no way around that. And occasionally people will get sick, but they're not going to get bad, deathly ill. If you haven't had a vaccine or your boosters, go ahead and get them now just so you can stay protected. Uh, and that's the update on uh, COVID for now. And nobody, everybody's going to get it. Look at the president. Okay, he had vaccines and boosters, and he got it. He got treated, and he got it again. And there's nothing to prevent people from getting it again, even after the Paxlovid treatment. It's going to happen uh, to a lot of people, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't take care of somebody who's got it or just got exposed to somebody or put somebody on treatment. If you can't get a hold of your regular doctor, just go to our website, docmaui, D-O-C-M-A-U dot com. That's the Doctors on Call website. And we can do it by telemedicine. You can stay at home. Your insurance will cover it. It all gets paid for. You can get evaluated and treated if you want, if you're positive, even with a home test. Now, on to monkeypox. Monkeypox is a totally different kettle of fish, okay? So uh, the family of, of coronavirus uh, is uh, respiratory and keeps changing, 
The monkeypox virus comes from the pox virus, is very similar to cowpox and smallpox, and they change as well, but they're spread totally differently. They are spread through direct contact, uh, and they're not airborne. So uh, it is spread uh, often, and most of the cases, through uh, sexual activity, usually uh, gay or homosexual activity, or people who come in contact with them. But it's a germ, and uh, it can be spread by clothing or towels. That's not true for the coronavirus. So it can be spread through furniture, clothing, or towels. So the people at risk are people who come in direct contact with people who have the monkeypox, which is a terrible name. It's not going to go away. They're not going to be able to change it. It's been around too long. They were able to change the name of the Brazil strain and the Africa strain and use Greek letters, but they're not going to be able to do this with monkeypox. The only people that really need the vaccine, which is available in small amounts, are people who are tremendously at risk. So if you're exposed to a lot of gay people or you're exposed to a lot of strangers who may uh, be around gay people uh, or you've had direct contact, then you get the vaccine. There's one brand and you need two doses two weeks apart. So it's not for everybody, even though the WHO has declared this to be an outbreak around the world, a, a true epidemic. It doesn't mean we all have to be worried. Okay, it's just normal simple hygiene, washing your hands, and be careful of dirty surfaces around, especially if you're around people who may have been exposed. Have we had monkeypox in Hawaii? Yes. Have we had it on Maui? Yes. Have I had a case uh, that I know about in our office? Yes. It's out there, okay? But So it's not going to go away. It'll be around for a while, but it's not going to affect most of us, and most of us don't need a vaccine and don't have to be treated. There is a bad treatment that is around for serious cases, but uh, it's nothing that's going to affect most of us. Well, that's a lot of information to uh, handle, but I think we've got it. We're now down to about the two-minute warning. But, Norm, thank you very, very much for coming on again. And because the, I, I don't really understand the, this one at all, and certainly none of us understood coronavirus, but we've certainly learned a lot. So I guess we are officially two-minute warning, so we're warning. warning. Yeah, and yeah, and many mahalos, Norm, for all you do for Maui, mm -hmm. for health care on Maui, uh, and to alert people of, uh, and keep alerting us about the coronavirus and, uh, and now monkeypox. So uh, we depend on you for updated information. We depend on you for everything, and you've done that in well, the community, Norm. In reality, you yeah, have. Yeah. You've taken care of people yeah. always, no matter what. Yeah. Anyone's been able to come into doctors on call, and um, it, it's been amazing. It's an amazing Well, yeah, yeah. You're office. very kind to uh, recognize that um, it's an island, and we have to keep reminding ourselves that. Uh, and uh, so we have to uh, take care of each other. And uh, the same people you see at Safeway are the people you're going to see uh, on the highway or on the wave or whatever. Uh, and yet at the same time... That's it. Uh, We've got Danny Couch back on. That means we're cut off, Dr. Norm. We Thanks, will see Norm. you soon. Aloha. Aloha. I love Hawaii. Danny Couch. <laughs>